Hey Rangers fans, welcome to Bleeding Blue Shirts, the Game 7 edition, part two. John Gino and Steve Valiquette, as we're here to talk all about Rangers Hurricanes tonight, Game 7. Winner advances to the Eastern Conference Final against the Tampa Bay Lightning. Again, 7.30 for the pregame show. The two of us will be there with Henrik Lundqvist, and then the game starts at 8 immediately afterward, right back to MSG for the complete postgame show, MSG Go as well. All that business out of the way, Stevie, how about the business of tonight? Uh, there's been some allegation among Ranger fans that given the way Game 6 went and watching Auntie Rob to go to the bench, that if there's even the slightest edge, it goes to the Rangers because of that. Agree or disagree? I have to agree. I, I mean, you go back to Game 6 and Igor Shosturkin had five high danger chances against him in the first period. He makes the saves, he stops a breakaway on Aho, and then they go the other way and they score two relatively easy ones. You know, they both had a certain odor to them. And I think what it does, John, is it sends a distinct message to the bench. Guys, I'm here for you. Breathe easy, just play. That's what the Ranger players started doing. And then they get through the game and it's really the easiest uh, way for the fans to watch the rest of that game unfold as a 5-2 victory was uh, as much uh, of room that they've had to finish a game. But you go to the other side and it makes everybody tight because it makes you as a player feel like you have to be perfect when your goalie isn't. And Ronta was not sharp, not just on the goals though, John, come on. The puck was coming off of him. He had, he, I think there could have been two or three other goals that could have happened because he was just off balance. He wasn't handling the puck. He wasn't seeing it clean off the release. You can see that. I just think that if you get there in game seven early, it plants that early seed of doubt in their team that I think you really need because as we've seen in the series, the team that scores first has won every game in the series. And the reason why that happens is because when Carolina scores first, they can suffocate you. They can play their style of play. They can roll four lines with energy. And uh, I think it's just a harder game for the Rangers to chase. And in in the history of game sevens in the NHL, the, the team that scores first wins 75% of the time. So that speaks exactly to what you were saying. But our buddy Henrik would be uh, remiss if he didn't mention, and he did mention, because it's maybe the bitterest memory he has of being a Ranger was what happened in the 2015 Eastern Conference Final. Rangers go to Tampa down three games to two. They not only beat the Lightning by scoring seven, but they run Ben Bishop from the net. Some little guy named Vasilevsky had to come in to finish that game. Ben Bishop then went in game seven at the Garden and shut out the Rangers 2-0. So that whole carryover from a bad game element for a goaltender certainly didn't work in the, in the Rangers case back then. But that said, again, talking about Antti Ranta's workload now, this will be 11 games in 22 days. He hasn't done this in five years. Is there something maybe different about that part for him tonight? You know, that's the difference. It's, it's workload. And it's also how compact our schedule has been this year versus what a normal playoff season would look like. There was more time between games uh, during the example that you referred to there. But with Ranta, um, you can see when a goalie's fatiguing, John, because they become late on the play. So mm -hmm. as the pass comes across their body, you'll see goalies just watching it and then they start moving. And all of these mobility goals, we've seen them in the series. If you're thinking about Mika's one-timers and the East to West plays, the uh, Lafreniere to Heedle, they've all had an element of delay for his first movement. And that's what I see. I also see sloppy rebounds. When I see rebounds coming off a goalie, especially when it comes into the body, we've seen it all series coming off of this side. Uh, that's another sign. Another sign is staying down too late. Uh, you can imagine the Kreider goal where he comes around the net and scores high side on Ronta when he stayed down too long. Right. So, uh, look, I think there's definitely an element to that. What could really help the Rangers cause is when they do have the puck in the zone, if they're aware of the fact that Ronta is fighting a little bit, keep it in zone. Even if you don't, even if it's on the perimeter a little bit and you get inside and you get behind the behind the net a lot, that'll keep him engaged. The longer he's in his stance, the longer he's in the crouch, the more up and downs he has to do. And that goes for their PK if it happens to be a power play situation, or it goes at five on five. The one thing the Rangers need is they have to own the ice dots down long enough to make Carolina work in this game tonight. 
And that has been a problem in Carolina for any team during the playoffs. We saw that with the Bergeron line in the Boston series. We've seen that so far with the Zibanejad, Kreider, Vetrano line in this series. If Jordan Stahl's line continues to do what they've done in these playoffs, and that's shut down the opposition's top line, does it just inherently mean that Strom, Panarin, and Kopp have got to own the ice when they're on it? I, I hope. I hope that everybody shows up and, and you, you just hope, right, John? Because I'm watching the series, um, you know, with Florida Panthers, Tampa Bay. You don't see Huberto at all. You don't see Barkov. I'm watching the Calgary Edmonton game. You can't find Johnny Goudreau. And, you know, I, I'd be remiss to say that we've had some players on the Rangers during this series where they've had some ghostly long stretches where they haven't been a factor. Uh, the players need to elevate everybody. And, and there are no passengers in a game seven. And I hope that everybody understands the severity of this. It's an indictment on your season if you don't have a good game seven. That's the way this thing works. The way I look at it, John, is it's uh, like your high school, uh, you know, final exam accounting for 60% of your final grade. That's what the playoffs is to a hockey player. Uh, yeah, you've had a great regular season, you've done everything, but you're gonna be remembered for what you didn't do in the playoffs. And that's okay as a player, because when your back's up against the wall, it should usually awaken you, uh, give you a level of urgency, because that's what this game needs from every player. And there's gonna be no excuses afterwards because the way their season's gonna be remembered is gonna be 60% of the final grade that they're given based on how strong they are on final exam. Yeah, and listen, the Rangers have had you know, straight A's so far in four games facing elimination. Fifth opportunity tonight. Last question, what does your gut tell you? What does your head tell you about what we're going to be talking about on the post-game show tonight? I think we're going to be talking about a win as long as the Rangers score first. I am definitely concerned if they don't score first because it's exactly the way that Carolina wants this to play. And we've seen it all series long that it's very difficult to play them from behind. We've seen it in the Boston series too with Carolina. That's the way they roll. However, completely different game conditions. If the Rangers score first, they can open the game up, which benefits them because they have higher end finishing power than Carolina has. So, you know, I look, I, I know these are a toss up, but my heart says the Rangers are gonna win. Interesting. Uh, the Rangers fans will settle into the very edge of their seats. Again, 7.30 for the pregame tonight. Henrik Lundqvist will join us. And then postgame, right after it's over on ESPN, one way or the other. Hands will be shaken. We know that. But we don't know whether they'll be shaking hands for congratulations or condolences. We will find out. We'll see you then. Stevie, this is going to be fun. Yep. See you tonight, buddy.